listeners and friends of the festival, welcome to Off Screen with OFA. I'm your host, Maddie, and I'm honored to present our third podcast episode, a conversation with Syrian filmmaker Habak, whose documentary film Her Stories is screening with us at this year's 2021 festival on June 27th. Her Stories follows three Syrian women as they fight for women's rights and their own individual freedom, both on the front lines of the Syrian revolution and abroad. I personally was deeply impacted by this documentary and the resilience and courage exhibited by each of these women. In my opinion, this film is a must watch at this year's festival. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with the film's director, Habak. Well, thank you so much for being on the Off Screen with Ofa podcast, Habak. It's so lovely to have you here um, and to discuss your film, Her Stories. What an incredible documentary. Uh, it was. It was truly such an impactful film. It it definitely left a mark on me. It really made me think, and um, you know, it it certainly was something that um, I'm very I'm very glad that I had the opportunity to watch. Um, so thank you so much for bringing it to this festival. I'm so excited that it's it's screening with us. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Actually, it's like it's, it's been a while, you know. It's like. Uh, we spent like four years filming this documentary and trying to push it out to the festival. So this, this thank you for the opportunity. Actually, you yeah, did. absolutely. Oh gosh, we're we're so glad that that uh, it's screening with us and that more people will have the chance to see this film because I think it's so important that that people do. Um, but I'll start with asking. Um, her stories follows three women. Um, and their individual journeys to continue the fight for their rights and the rights of others and specifically women in the midst of the Syrian revolution. How did you get connected with these women specifically and what drew you to each of their stories? Because they're each very unique um, and each very impactful in their own right. So the film is about three women as you will see in the film and each story is separated from the other. And uh, so basically I contact with the people, like as you will see in the film, the third uh, character in the film, she is my friend and we live together in, in hospital back to Aleppo 2016 under the, under the siege. So I know her and I saw her how she's like trying to change the society around her and trying to push people. So she has a chance like to leave Aleppo and to leave the sage before the sage is happening, but she chose to, to, to stay and helping people uh, to surviving from this horrible war. So I saw her like how she want to change uh, the look of the the Syrian society about about uh, nurses actually, or women working as a nurses is because back before the revolution actually it's uh, uh, working as a nurse it's 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 a bad thing in, in, on, on society. So, but the revolution give her a chance to explain herself and to uh, change this opinion about or the Syrian woman who was working on as a nurse, you know? And, but the second character, it's uh, Fatima. Uh, I saw her back, I think 2015, before uh, Aleppo siege. So she, uh, I saw her like when I go to and visit my friend in, in Idlib. Uh, so she was training some women and she was training them about their right because before the revolution, we never have like a chance or they never have a chance, like for example, like an NGO company, teach them about their right, teach them about like a lot of stuff they, they never know about. So uh, Fatima have a chance like to, to train this, this incredible woman and especially like in a war zone because uh, it, it's, it's everything, it's changeable. In, in that moment when like you are living a revolution, you are living in, in a war, like you are creating a new um, 
society around you or something like that. So she training them, she teach them about their right, what they can do, what they can, what, you know, it's like, and she share with them uh, her incredible story, like to give them hope, like everything will change. Uh, yeah, and the third character, it's, it's we am. I know her from um, social media because she's living in, uh, Lebanon, and I know her because she's working uh, with an NGO company uh, to support women, uh, especially in camps in Lebanon. So, and because she has disability and she, in, in Syrian society, the people who have disability uh, can't work in, in the opinion. Wow. Yeah, it's like, you know, and she is pushing all this stuff out of her mind and she, that everything she can do, like to just change the, this opinion, you know? Absolutely, I mean, I mean, certainly all three of them exhibit an incredible amount of perseverance, but I would say, yeah, I mean, the fact that she has been able to deal with her disability and at the same time bring so much, um, you know, positive change about and be working to so much, it, it's, it's fantastic to see and, um, all three of these women are incredibly inspiring. Um, and it's so wonderful to see as much as there is, is so much carnage happening and, and conflict that there is, you know, something positive coming out of, out of this, this wish for change. Um, and kind of going off of that, in an article published in uh, digitalstudiome.com, you were quoted as saying the Syrian revolution has shifted the rules in society and made people believe in themselves and that they can create a change. So what do you believe is the role of, of film specifically as a medium in, in helping to facilitate that change? And, and why did you choose documentary film as, as a way to, to tell these stories? So the Syrian revolution uh, give the people not just the women, all the people in, in Syria, a chance like to, to, to create a, a new thing around them, to create a new society, to change the, rule, the rules around them. So I chose this film uh, like to, to show as a film because first thing I am, I am a cinematographer. So anyone like working as a cinematographer or as a director, so our, everything around him as a film or as a script or as something like that. So, and especially like, so that, that is in, inside me, you know, it's like, especially when you are working in, on the ground was in war and you don't have any contact uh, outside, outside the area you live in. So, and, and you thought it's like, this is, important stuff you can like share with the people like who's live, for example in the UK or in Canada or in, in a safe environment you know because like our environment back to Syria it was not safe and we don't have contact with outside so so in in, in my opinion like we have uh, like working as a, a cinematographer or as a director we have a chance like to share this incredible story with like uh, the world you know uh second thing is like documentary is that you know that's uh, the young people now it's always like they are going to like video thing and watch video stuff it's not uh th they don't go to like uh, read an article or something like that. And I want like to share this information or these stories with them because they are the important, they, they are, are the next generation, like they, yes. will, they will be, you know, it's like, and that when we like, we will have a chance to, to change. And because, because they are children, they, they are young, they are still young. They don't know about all the rules it was happening before, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think, 
you know, getting this story to people that might otherwise not fully understand the context behind it or, or the efforts that are going into the initiatives to create change, I think can only amplify the possibilities for change. So yeah. I, I think it's wonderful that you've, that you've put together this film. Um, going into the production of this film a little bit, and you mentioned that you're a cinematographer, but you're also the director and producer of this film. How did the shooting process work? I know that you're currently residing in the UK. I don't know if you um, were present at all during filming. And because you're, you're, you're following three different women and three different stories, did you have camera operators assigned to, to each individual? How did, how did that kind of work? So I have two camera operator, two cinematographer. Uh, they were following the characters. Uh, and me, actually. Uh, so first, like, uh, it was the cinematographer who was filming with uh, We Am, uh, sorry, not we, uh, with Malacca. And uh, because he's living in, in the east of uh, the countryside of Aleppo, when Malacca lived there. And because me and him, we did some film with Malacca when we were under the siege in Aleppo. So he was filming with her like every day, all day actually. And we, we spent all the time, it was hard on us because like I am here in the UK, I can't go to Syria to continue film because I am a refugee. So it was hard on us. So yeah, we spent all the time like speaking via Skype, via WhatsApp and because he's, he's my friend and we understand each other. So, yeah, uh, he was filming with her every day uh, and we, we tried, like, it was hard on us, like, for example, when Malika get injured, as we, you will see in the film, yeah. so, and we thought we will never, like, continue filming with her, you know, it's like, it, it's, it's a big thing happened, you know, but after that, it's like, we felt like this is the story we will continue and film with her, because actually it's like, for example, when you have a relationship with your characters and you involve him with every process you have, you will like do a good story and you will produce a good story. But when you like uh, don't have this relationship with the character, you will never like end with like a good story, you know? And because she's our friend and we try like in the beginning she, keep us out of the story and she wants like to continue finish. And actually it's like, it's, it's hard on her, you know, it's like to understand her. Yeah, we will support you, whatever you want. But in the end, we need this story to deliver, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and second, like it was Mustafa and it was hard, actually like also hard uh, with Mustafa and he was filming with Fatima every day in Idlib. So uh, what's happening, what, as you will see in the film, when Fatima tried to escape to Turkey, uh, they, the Assad regime bombed them. That was uh, terrifying. I, I, I was putting myself, I mean, not that I could ever understand that experience, but, but the way that that, was, that that was shot and the circumstances that the filmmaker and obviously that Fatima found themselves in, it's, it's a very visceral experience to watch that happen. Yeah, that day, like Mustafa texted me a message, sent me a message, and he said, "Yeah, we got bombed by the Assad regime," and and he he disappeared. He just disappeared, and I am sitting in the UK, just like trying to have contact with him, like oh from goodness. anywhere. Like I spent all the day, like angry, just like I want like to hear what's happening to them, but you know, it's like. I am in environment, a safe environment, and they are there. So I'm just like spend all the day, like just thinking what 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 scenario we have. You know, it's like if they like injure, if they died, if they, what's happening? Until like the end of the day, like he just texts me back and he say, yeah, we are fine, and uh, Fatima managed to escape to, to Turkey. So, and that, all, all of that is because like, we don't have like uh, a good service in Syria and we use like, uh, uh, for example, like 
Pascual. Uh, it's like Turkey service, like from Turkey. Right. Yeah, because we are like close to 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 Turkey border. So yeah, it's like it, it was hard on me. Like I'm sitting here and what's happening there? It's like I just want to know. Yeah, and I did the filming with We Am uh, because I have access to, to travel, like actually to, to Lebanon. And I spent like one, one month with her uh, in Lebanon filming with her. Uh, the last bit of the film we did, we did it in Netherlands, I think. Yeah, in Netherlands. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, we uh, actually used like 5D Mark IV. <laughs> To film all the film, uh, it's it's actually it's because like the cinematographer in Syria don't have any access for like black magic or six K cameras or something like that. Right. They don't have the equipment to, to deal with. So that when I thought it's it's important to me like to follow the same uh, to use the same camera as they use, you know. For the sake of that consistency. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's incredible the way that that it was able to come together and so seamlessly too. And, and the way that you were able to manage those transitions between the stories as well. I mean, um, I think, you know, as much as there was there was pressure on all of you, I'm sure to deliver, as you said, I think it, it absolutely paid off. Um, so in terms of sort of the development that went into this film, if we kind of track back even more prior to production, how did you acquire the funding for this project? And, and how long did it actually take to secure? Because um, you spent, did you say four years filming this this project? Yeah, actually. So yeah, it's it was hard on me actually to like raise funds, you know, uh, because like when I was in Syria in 2016 and 2017, uh, I don't know about, I, I never know about uh, the process, you know, it's like, I don't know, like there is a development fund after that production, all this stuff, I, I never know. I know like go and film and do a documentary, you know, it's because we, we, we don't have like um, a company to fund us. Yes. You know? Or sometimes we working with, uh, TV channel or something like that. So when I came to the UK, it was ha so hard on me, like because I start to learn all this stuff, like for example, development fund, uh, how to write the project, all this thing. And because when, when I was in Syria, actually I, I never focused about this stuff because, you know, living in a zone war, to always have action, you, know, you always like, never like sitting I, I I never remember myself like sitting at home and try like to write something right or something like that. It's because I always in the field, I always in the street with the people. Like when it's bombing happened, like I go and film or <clears throat> something like that. So yeah, it was hard on me. Like I tried to learn all this stuff like from zero, uh, you know. And because I did some, uh, I did uh, an exhibition with uh, a German company called HPS uh, in Lebanon. So I go and met them in 2019 there. And I just like sp spoke with them about the idea and they love it actually. It's like, and they say, yeah, let's do it. But it's like, you know, this is a small budget film, like, um, as I learned, like, now, like, as I saw the budget of films, like, thousands of dollars, uh, 100,000, 200,000, so, you know, we did this film with a low budget, you know, but it, it was hard, but it's, it's, the, I, the thing is, it's, we will do it, we need to do it, because we are delivering our message, our stories, especially because we are Syrian. You know, it's like uh, for me, uh, I never think about the money and then like, you know, it's like just deliver your message. But in the end, you need this money because it's, there is some people working with you and they need to get paid. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm I'm so pleased that the financing came through for you and that, and that someone did say yes, um, because as you said, it's so important to deliver this message. Yeah. Um, 
tracking back as well to the same article that I referenced before, there is a um, heartbreaking image of you rescuing a child during a bombing in Syria. Um, having been on the front lines of this conflict, what does this documentary mean to you specifically? And what do you hope audiences will take away from it? What is the message that you hope that will resonate with people? So from the beginning of the revolution, I've been uh, like, I, I, I worked as a cameraman there, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I always on the front line. I always like doing some stuff on like when the bombing happened. Like, especially when we were under the siege in Aleppo, like I was working in hospital and, the, and it was the last hospital in Aleppo. Um, and we saw an incredible thing, like children die, uh, people get injured. Uh, it was hard on us. Like I remember the last three months uh, under the siege, there is no food left, no water, nothing actually. It's like everything is like feel as, we will die after, in the next two days before we fled. But, you know, it's like being there, it's, it's important, you know, it's like if there is no cinematographer, no cameraman there, the message will never like deliver, you know, like, especially like ev everyone like being there, it was hard on him, especially for example, the people who, who won there and from UK, from USA, from Canada, from anywhere. And they spend like a week there or two weeks or something like that. They, it, it was hard on him, on them also. So yeah, that, that is like, I always been in the front line and I hope to, to go back once, one day in some way, you know. Yeah, uh, actually, the documentary mean to me. It's it's mean to me to me a lot. You know, it's like I am delivering. It's like you know, working as a cinematographer or as a, as you know, everyone and he's like uh, or as a painter, he's like delivering. He's explaining himself with his work. You know, and I want to, uh, that. That is me. You know, that is like how I think. How uh, I want to change the community around me or the society around me. So, and especially it's because it's, this story, it's important to me, it's because this is our story. <clears throat> this is our history. Yeah. As, as a Syrian, this is our, our history. This is how the, our children will see how we change the society, how we, how, how we ask for our freedom, how we get our freedom, how we ask for it, you know, and how we, we, we survived from this incredible war, you know. Yeah, what I want from audience to get from this film, you know, it's hard, you know, it's like this woman, they are go, going through a lot and they never give up. They never ever like, they get injured, they get bombed, uh, they live in a zone war for 10 years, they're working in hospitals, but they never give up. So they still fighting for their right, for their freedom. And uh, not just for them and for, them, for themselves, for the women around them, for all the Syrian women. That what I want to deliver the message like, like everyone, like sometimes when someone like feel uh, not well and he give up. So these women, like they are going through a lot and the Syrian revolution give them a chance and they, they have this chance and they just, just get it, you know, just have a chance and, and, and try to change and they never give up. They are still fighting until now. Yes, and it's it's absolutely incredible to see um, how much they've persevered and and you know the amount of of incredible conflicts that they've that they've faced and and overcome and amount of personal injury that they've faced and overcome and it's um, truly truly inspiring. So 
thank you so much, Rock, for, for joining me today. Um, to anyone who is listening, please, please, please go and see this film. Um, it is absolutely worth your time and worth um, worth watching because it's it's something that you will you will not soon forget. Um, so please visit opa.ca or Habak, do you have any social media that anyone can visit or a website of any kind? Yeah, we have an Instagram, we have the Facebook page, uh, her stories uh, films on Instagram and her stories film on Facebook page also. And we have the website habakfilms.com. You can see the trailer there and you can see uh, the poster and all the news about the film there. Wonderful. Okay, well, everyone, please check out her stories and thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This podcast is executive produced by Maddie Kaiser and Wendy Donnan. The music is by Chris Shin. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone, and tune in next time.